Believe it or not, reading research papers from start to end is one of the biggest time wasters for academics. And actually there are ways that you can read and understand research papers a lot quicker by using a mixture of traditional tools and AI tools that will help you along the way. And if you're needing to read loads of research papers just to extract information for your literature review, for your essay, for your research proposal, then you'll find the five tips that I give you in today's video really helpful where I'll be speaking about the way that you want to disseminate and read research research papers and how you can use AI to help you with this. First and foremost, you want to start by reading the abstract. The abstract will give you the most concise summary of what is to come in the paper. And from here, you can decide whether this is a paper that is worth reading or not. A lot of the time we find papers, we think that they're interesting, the title sounds like it's relevant. Actually, when you dig deeper, you find that the methods and maybe the participants or maybe the exclusion or the inclusion criteria isn't quite what you're looking for. And you can very easily get that information from the abstract. So this is where you always want to begin. And one of the most important parts of the abstract is the gap in literature. There's almost always a sentence or two just explaining what the gap in literature is, what is it that the researchers we're looking for and again this will give you a really good idea of whether it's relevant to you and whether you want to read on. The second thing that you want to do is define any keywords or just understand the background of the research paper as much as possible. When you're reading research papers, you'll find that there are many subject specific keywords. So if you're having to read and you're having to keep getting blocked by different words that you don't quite understand, you don't quite know why they're relevant, then this is going to be a problem for you as you read and really will slow you down. So one way that you can overcome this is by using AI and you can actually use Unriddle. Unriddle will help you to read more efficiently and understand the concepts that are discussed. It's an AI tool that will help you read, write and learn faster and you can very easily interpret interact with the documents through the AI assistant so you can very quickly find and understand information that's presented to you. Okay, so let's look at Unriddle in action. So I have a research paper here that I've opened up and it's just extremely complex. There are so many subject specific keywords and I just want it to be simplified for me. So the first question I'm asking is to explain this to me like I'm five and I absolutely love this. I love how simple and basic the explanation is and it just gives you a base from where you can begin. The next question I've asked is what are these brain builders mentioned that were that was mentioned in this research paper and again it's broken it down for me and it's mentioned what this refers to and explained kind of its meaning and the different names of the cell types as well and then lastly I've also asked um, what these cell types are named after and why they have such odd names and again you know this is the kind of thing that will give you the context that you need and help you to understand and sort of memorize and, and kind of keep that in mind. And this is a really great way of simplifying research paper reading and reading not only quickly, but also understanding it efficiently too. I've also pulled out some of my own questions I thought that I'd want to interrogate uh, it with. And here I've asked about uh, the idea of talking to each other, like what does that actually mean um, when brain cells talk to each other? And again, I've got a really good explanation for that. So you can clearly see that just by using Unriddle and by interrogating it and asking questions, I'm able to simplify and understand parts of the research paper that I would have otherwise not understood or I would have taken time to kind of go back and forth from a dictionary or from Google and searching and trying to figure it out, rather I can just do that here as I'm reading. Um, again, I've, I've found another word that I don't understand and I've asked it what this means and I've got a really clear understanding of it, allowing me to keep on reading. Now, again, here's a second research paper that I thought I would um, show you with. I've asked a basic question, what are antibodies? This is a really simple question, a fundamental question. One thing that you can do here using Unriddle is you can actually start a new note. And using this, you are able to maintain and save the answers that you have received within a document. And this is a really great way of keeping your studying and reading quite an active process and not passively just reading you're actually able to sort of take what you need, save it somewhere, and then copy that elsewhere, and maybe have a bank of definitions that you can use in the future. I found quite a few words here that I didn't quite understand, um, and it's pulled out for me, and it's even said something like, in context to this particular research paper, this is what it means. So it's not just giving the definition, but it also is putting it in context 
to this understanding. So I think this is great, a great way of starting to read. And actually, Unriddle have a free plan which you can use today. I'll leave the link in my description down below. And with this free plan, you are able to chat to documents and create up to 10 notes or for just $20 a month, you can have unlimited chat messages and up to 150 notes, which I think will really help you on the path to being able to read more efficiently and quickly. Now, once you've read the abstract, you understand the key words, the next thing you want to do is read the conclusion and the discussion. Now, I am notorious for just skipping right to the end, and this is because I really want to know what the results were. What were the key findings? What is the take-home message that you want me to take home? If I know what the take-home message is, then I kind of know whether or not I want to invest my time understanding where they got this take-home message from. What were the results? What were the methods? What was the pathway and process to get to that take-home message? Again, by doing this, you're just sifting out which papers you actually want to read and you'll be able to only focus on those that are truly valuable for your work. And what you want to do whilst you read, if you're really good with this, is you want to establish some sort of reading framework. So you can develop maybe an Excel spreadsheet where you list the paper that you're reading, the date, you know, the authors, things like that. And then you list criteria. So like this paper was really good because it spoke about um, this particular method that you're interested in, or it used this particular approach, or they had X number of participants or whatever it is. And you kind of have this list. So as you're reading and as you're developing your understanding, you've generated a bank of research papers and why they are valuable to you. So make sure you're doing this as you go along as well. The next thing you want to do is to look at any figures, graphs, or diagrams. We can very easily visualize patterns and trends and connections simply by looking at a diagram. This is actually a kind of cheat code where you can very quickly understand what's happening in the results without actually reading the text. And of course, if a result stands out to you, if one of your figures or one of the diagrams looks like it's quite significant, of course, that is when you go and delve in deeper into the text and you can actually interrogate that and see what's going on. This last tip is actually something that I think people miss out on quite a lot and not necessarily see the value in. Try to find review papers that speak about the topic. So let's say you've picked out a research paper, you're struggling to understand it very well and you're actually... You know, you, you don't quite know what's going on here and you just want to know a bit more about the subject's area so you can maybe write a strong literature review. Instead of reading a very detailed primary research paper, why not go to a review paper? Remember, a review paper is actually made up of a number of different papers that are the top papers, that are the most established papers. That work has been done for you and that sifting has also already been done by someone a lot more senior than you. They're a really good tool to summarise the research space and speak about current kind of research breakthroughs, especially if it's a more recent review. And one of the things I love about review papers is that they also give you and kind of discuss the limitations and discuss sort of future work in the area. So what you can do is let's say there's a paper that you don't quite understand that you're reading, you can go and try to find a review paper that mentions that paper and actually what you'll find is they might summarize this paper for you and put it in context to other research papers that are similar to it and this will just give you a really good background understanding of sort of the general kind of topic. And this is actually probably my biggest hack and it's a really cool way of doing a literature review without actually doing it yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that these hacks um, were a good way of kind of helping you become a better academic and a better researcher and just help you work a little bit more efficiently and productively with your time. Um, if you want to try Unriddle, as I mentioned earlier, I will leave the link in the description bar down below. So go and click there and go and try it out for yourself. You can try it for free if you want and see if it works for you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Like I said, please press the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. And um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.